And does, this is the part where there's a two-minute commercial? Two-minute commercial. Two commercial. I was about to ask. So, uh, and then we'll get back to a Q&A after this presentation. Right, right. Um, so here are the announcements. Today at the City Club of Cleveland, we're listening to a special program with Mayor Dean DePiro, Mayor Ed Fitzgerald, Mayor Bill Cervenic, Mayor Earl Lycan, Mayor Beryl, Mayor Beryl Rothschild, and moderated by Cuyahoga County Treasurer Jim Rakakis. We will return to our speaker in a moment for our traditional City Club questions. We encourage you to formulate your questions now while we break for a few announcements. We welcome all of you here, especially those of you who are guests. We hope you will join the City Club and become an active member in our ongoing civic dialogue. This Friday, May 8th at noon, our regular forum will feature actor, author, and national spokesperson for the Network to End Domestic Violence. Wednesday, May 27th, the City Club welcomes the Honorable Sherrod Brown, Senator from Ohio for a forum on health care. For more information about our programs, to make reservations, or order a tape of today's program, please call the City Club at 1-888-223-6786 or 216-621-0082, or visit the website cityclub.org. Now, we'd like to return to our speaker for our traditional City Club question and answer period. We welcome questions from everyone, including guests. Um, let's see, holding the microphone is um, City Club PR and Programs Manager, Carrie Miller. So now, first question, please. You've done a nice job of explaining uh, the aggressive tactics of each one of the, the communities, how you're addressing this problem. But what are some of the impediments that you still see today, whether they be institutional impediments from private interests, the banks, the judicial system, the government? What are the biggest impediments that you see right now towards addressing this problem? Uh, Mayor DePiro? Thanks for uh, the question, John. Um, and I, I think that they, in my conversations with Don Graves, I should have just put an earpiece in my ear and tell him what the, he should have just told me what to say because He's been all over this uh, issue, but he, he's educated me a lot. I know that in the past, one of the frustrations has been, um, like Bill talked about, the banks thinking the, it's 50 bucks, it's a good deal. Getting the lender's attention, you know, that's, they're going to do something about this. Getting someone out there to cut the grass, make sure the house is secure. Um, um, you know, getting them in touch with prospective buyers, because sometimes we'll have people call City Hall and say, hey, I know there's a foreclosure. We're trying to get a hold of a bank and talk with somebody because we'd like to buy it, you know, a nice young family. I think that that's getting better. I think that they're, uh, they have companies that they're hiring. But getting the, the lender's attention, especially the ones that are out of state, are, you know, that's, that's frustrating at times. And I think Don would agree with me. I think they're getting better, um, but there's probably some work to, to, that needs to be done in that area as well. Mayor Lycan, you had your yeah, I would just uh, add something and emphasize something that Mayor DePiro uh, mentioned earlier, and that is uh, people coming into the community who may have seen ads on television about how to get rich on real estate and who figured out uh, a way to purchase many properties at very inexpensive prices who come in, try to operate under the radar screen, don't comply with your city ordinances, uh, move in, uh, try to fix up properties, uh, with minimal investment um, and then uh, rent them out or sell them to somebody else, you know those properties are headed straight down uh, because they've never been brought up to code, uh, they've never been properly uh, renovated. Um, and so uh, we, we all, I think, have an issue of locating the people who are doing that, finding the dumpsters outside and dealing with those situations. So that's another impediment to dealing with the problem, having to constantly be on guard to deal with the, the groups that are involved in these kinds of uh, efforts. Ken. Uh, I wish that all of the uh, officials uh, at every other level of government uh, were a, a Jim Rakakis. It would, it would make things a lot better, but that's not always the case. Uh, lately, we've got, we seem to be getting more cooperation from Freddie Mac and, and Fannie Mae and some of the, some of the HUD people. But we, we have, even before the foreclosure crisis, we have had uh, a struggle 
with some of our branches of government. Frankly, the General Assembly, uh, prior to a, just a, a short time ago, didn't get it. They didn't get it about predatory lending and, and a number of other things, and so that was very difficult. Right now, uh, thankfully, we have uh, legislators like Representative Foley who examines the problems and gets right in there with uh, the kind of bill that we need. For example, we have a situation now where renters who have been complying with every part of their uh, rental agreement, including paying the rent, as soon as uh, many of the lenders uh, take the house uh, through sheriff's sale, uh, they immediately evict the renter. Well, uh, a Representative Foley's bill is going to attempt to deal with that, to give notice, and hopefully uh, uh, at least some recognition of the rental agreement. Uh, I need to say just a word about uh, uh, Deutsche Bank, because uh, whereas some of the banks and lenders have been cooperative or are starting to get it, uh, if there was a poster child for an institution that gives us heartburn, and I'm being very pleasant when I pick <laughs> that word, uh, uh, that, would be, that would be it. And we've got to be able to reach out across state lines and, and get to folks like that. And my final comment is that HUD is actually an organization that is many organizations. And there are many HUD offices that do a fine job. Uh, but in some, of, in some of their programs, such as delivering the dollar homes that was part of a program, uh, it is just a hidebound bureaucracy. And uh, again, going back to the first suburbs, that housing committee has now, Han showed, some major communication with uh, HUD and with our uh, uh, federal representatives to see if we can straighten out some of those problems. As uh, Jim and others have pointed out, a crisis is a terrible thing to waste. I'm wondering who on the panel has any thoughts about, while this is a crisis, that you see opportunities for either socially, financially, or the makeup of your city changes in, in five years that turns us into a positive. Mayor Savannah and then Mayor Fitzgerald. Yeah. In, in all honesty, some, many of the ho we have a lot of uh, private uh, rehabbers coming in. They're registering with us, doing some, some very good work, and converting older homes, average age of about 60 years old, in, into a much better condition, almost a brand new condition that wouldn't have happened had the foreclosure crisis not taking place. I would have liked to have found a better way to get to that point rather than going through this foreclosure crisis. But we, uh, we are seeing houses selling again in Euclid, obviously not for what they sold for five, six, seven years ago. But it, we are seeing the improvement in the older stock of our uh, community, and uh, it, it is a help. And that also is encouraging our residents. We cannot do it ourselves. We need the help of the private sector. We need the help, we, we need the help of other government agencies as well. But it's really the private sector that's going to eventually pull us out of, of this and helping us rehab these homes. Ed? Well, one thing that Lakewood had a shortage of is uh, uh, parking in commercial areas and, and green space. Yeah. If, if you've ever been to Lakewood, we're the, we're the most densely populated city between, uh, basically in the entire Midwest outside of, uh, outside of Chicago. So um, that was something that we had a deed for. So for many years, we had talked about trying to acquire property uh, uh, for the city for those purposes, but land prices were, were too high and it just wasn't available. Um, so we would try to s squirrel away some money every once in a while, but it would just really wasn't possible to do. So this has actually enabled us to acquire some properties that are adjacent to uh, commercial areas mm -hmm. where we're going to be demolishing homes and turning it into space that we can use to make our commercial properties more viable. We also have a really vibrant group in Lakewood that's doing a lot of community gardening work. And we've started to have a, uh, a partnership with them where when we acquire some of these properties, we're going to actually end up turning them into additional green space for either recreation or community gardening. Um, and it's just trying to make uh, a positive situation out of uh, cheap available land that for the first time is available in our city for, for many decades. 